Let me tell you something about this episode of Impact. Never in all my life have I ever seen such a big piece of great show. <laughs> Trick do all you fucking fanboys. I tricked all your asses. You're probably getting all mad there for a minute. Oh, I hate this video. Terrible review. Well, I actually enjoyed it. And I don't even understand how this is possible. Last week you had a fucking horrible show. A fucking terrible show. One of the worst all-time impacts last week. And, t and, and this episode was actually pretty fucking good. A very good main event. A very good performance in the last match. Let's see what else we got. We start off with Austin Aries. I wasn't happy about him winning the X Division title last week. People are like, well, you like Aries, so why are you complaining? I'll tell you why. Because he just comes out of nowhere. They're about to, you know, repeat the same storyline from last year. I was pretty fucking unhappy about it. But Hulk Hogan comes out, he introduces a new wrestler. Not a new wrestler, it's suicide. Instead, he changes outfit slightly. And now he's manic. Don't understand how, like... The guy's been there for three years and they suddenly change his name. They're not even changing his gimmick or anything. Still the same Skeletor retarded costume. Just changing his fucking name and putting the Super Mario logo on his fucking chest. What's up with all the Super Mario logos in here? You got Magnus with Super Mario logos all over the place. I mean, I, I'm thinking of like fucking Yoshi's here. Where the fuck is Yoshi? I mean, come on, you got Mario, where's Luigi, where's Bowser up in this fucking joint? Come on, there's fucking M's all over the place, fucking video game references as far as the eye can see. Anyway, Hogan makes this match and Ares is going to be himself in this match and Saban. You know, generic shit here, Saban with a generic promo. Then we got AJ Styles defeating Kazarian, decent match, very short. I wasn't a big fan of this submission, but it's slowly growing on me. Um, the calf killer. It sort of fits his more aggressive personality. Even though, you know, he's not really getting over with this tough guy routine. It's more of an emo gimmick. But a decent match. Mickey James uh, with a decent promo, but, you know, not a bad promo or anything, but it doesn't make sense. Why is she standing on the ladder if she's not even in the ladder match next week? It, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Karen Terrell and Gail Kim are the ones in the ladder match, not Mickey James. Mickey James is going to have a normal match, I'm pretty sure. I don't know why she's on the ladder if she's not in the fucking match. This is more TNA logic that doesn't make sense, but to say something positive... The promo wasn't bad. It was decent. Mickey James is decent on the mic. So a half complaint there. Then backstage, we got Van Hammer and the big O from uh, Zack Ryder's YouTube show. Who's it going to be? They pick Van Hammer. You know, no one knows who this fucking jabroni is. And they don't pick big O. Zack Ryder has like something like a million fucking YouTube subs. Uh, a million something Twitter followers. He always is talking about the Big O. He promoted him on YouTube. You think that they would take the guy and at, at, at least do something with them so they can make a little bit of money, but instead they vote him off for another guy that's a lot smaller, isn't as interesting looking, has a lame Van Hammer gimmick. It's more logic from this company. Uh, I know I said it was a good, sh it was a decent show. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Uh, Hernandez defeats Jay Bradley. Not a bad match, but you know I don't really like either of these guys. But to be fair, it wasn't a bad match. I don't know why Hernandez is suddenly stealing Monty Brown's finisher, but uh, you know <laughs> whatever. It was, it was it was all right. Not bad or anything, but. You know, the star power on this show at times is very much lacking. I mean, why are these guys in a tournament for the world title? Are we supposed to actually buy into the fact that these guys stand a chance? 
Then it's Gunner and uh, and James Storm defeating the Bro Mans, a gay uh, fucking Billy and Chuck ripoff here. But uh, it was decent actually, decent squash match, like fast paced and uh, not so bad. You know, I said that Gunner and Storm aren't that that bad as a team. They're sort of like uh, an AMW two. They're like the same fucking tag team basically. Uh, this really shows that the tag team division at the moment doesn't have any depth. Not like it had any depth to begin with. It was just a fucking, uh, you know, just a fucking three-man division, basically. A three-team uh, division. And, uh, now they're just gonna face the bromans until the end of time, I guess. Until they can face, uh, the, uh, Chavo and Hernandez again, I suppose. Uh, then the main event mafia comes out, and how predictable that they would choose Magnus as their fourth member. This guy is not over with the fucking crowd. He ain't over with anybody, and yet they're trying to shove him down our throats. Uh, the guy just uh, did not fit in when he came out there. Sting, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe. You know, yeah, I'll accept it, but fucking Magnus. Come on, fucking Magnus. Are you fucking serious? Sting, Kurt Angle. Forget it. I don't care how many fines you have to pay. Break contract and get the fuck over to WWE already. This is a fucking joke. Main event mafia. Fucking faction that wasn't even fucking over in the first place. Just, I'm so happy that Sting is eventually going to go to WWE. And Kurt Angle, once he sees that... You know, Sting is probably having a good time over there. Kurt Angle's going to head off into the sunset as well. Then it's uh, Jeff Hardy defeating Joseph Park by disqualification. I don't understand why Joseph Park was giving Jeff Hardy such a hard time. A fat motherfucker like Park. I, you know, I don't get it. If, you know, why Joseph Park? Why not just make him abyss again? It's not really making much sense. It, it, and, and what the fuck is this? Abyss takes the, the TV title and runs off into the sunset. You don't see him anymore. I mean, this is like the most fucking random show of all fucking time. Uh, you know, th this was just, it was nonsensical. They're still doing the same thing that Abyss and him might be one and the same. He black hole slammed the ref. This is what we were doing for six months ago, and we're now at the same point in time. But even more than six months, this fucking storyline has been going on for fucking ever. It's been going on since last summer with Joseph Park. Fucking end this storyline already. I'm getting fucking sick and tired of watching it. Then Van Hammer comes out, and thank fucking God they didn't vote him in. You know, I don't understand why the fuck they're still doing gut check. It's fucking pointless already. I mean, if they already fired half the guys they hired, they got rid of the best guy they had, uh, Christian York. They got rid of the fucking knockout that they hired. Now, why the fuck are they going to hire more people? Just so they can waste more money and fucking uh, just fire them eventually? You know, it's quite obvious that this guy didn't stand a chance. Now, he didn't make it in. But why even contribute time to this segment? Just do away with gut check. It ain't even fucking worth it. You know, just bring them in. Find a clever way to get them in. It's not like this is over or something that a lot of people are looking forward to. Only, you know, the TNA fans that are seriously obsessed and won't say a, a thing that's bad with TNA ever, even on their worst night. You know, those are the people who say that gut check is good. No one else is saying this shit is entertaining or compelling or anything of the sort. Then in the main event, we got Chris Sabin, uh, Austin Aries, and Manic in a three-way. They get rid of Manic, and once they got rid of Manic in there, Doc powerbombed them at ringside. There was an awesome fucking match with Austin Aries and AJ Styles. And I know this whole show had a lot of shit on it, but this match, you know, this one match, and it's only two hours, opposed to over three hours over on Raw. This match was fucking good. Very compelling. Very exciting. A lot of fucking false finishes. A fucking epic, 
epic finish. And it was it was epic. It was great. It was excellent. And I will excuse the fact that they had Chris Saban lose the title because this made it unpredictable. You didn't think that Saban was going to get it back. So bravo to TNA. They've done their first unpredictable thing in, what, 10 years out of their 11-year history. Congratulations. It's about fucking time. But that was a great segment. And if they could at least, once a week, at least deliver a matchup to that quality, I will say good things about TNA. You see what happens? When TNA has a good show, I say it's a good show. So don't come at me screaming and yelling that I'm a hater, that I'm only a WWE fanboy. Because when they do something good, I will say it. Because as I said in the past, I ain't just a WWE fan. I'm a wrestling fan. I like all kinds of wrestling. As long as it's good. And this was good. I enjoyed this match. And uh, yeah, it was a good one. I'm very surprised. All right, so uh, good job to TNA.